Earlier this year, I was a part of a youth and young adult event, and it reached that point in the event, it was the last night, where everyone wants to stay up late and have fun and fellowship and play games because no one wants to go to bed, including myself. But it was getting late, and I was tired, and I, I had to speak at the, the last session the next day, and I, very quickly, I, I felt the need to go pray and to go to bed. So I finally listened, and I went and prayed, and I got myself ready for bed, and I went to sleep. Much to my surprise, I wake up the next morning to literally almost everyone saying, you missed it, you missed it, you missed it. Apparently, shortly after I had left, a huge prayer broke out, and ministry began to take place, and prophecies were happening, and it was an awesome time. And everyone just kept telling me how much I missed out because I went to bed. For those of you that don't know, I have always struggled with the condition known as FOMO, fear of missing out. A lot of people do. Uh, so to wake up hearing over and over again, you missed it, you missed it, you missed it, typically would bring about feelings of depression and disappointment and regret and frustration because I missed it. But for the first time in my life, I had no regret. Why? Because while people were telling me I missed it or kept saying I, I, I missed something, God kept assuring me I didn't miss anything. Well, sure I did, Lord. All of this stuff happened and I wasn't here for it. And the Lord said, what did I tell you to do last night? Well, you told me to go to bed. And did you? Yes. So how could you have missed out on something that I never intended for you to be a part of? Hmm. Today we're going to talk about missed opportunities. Welcome back to Life with Jalen, everyone, where we have real talk with real people about real life. Thanks for joining me today. On the topic of real life, on the topic of real talk, a lot of people at some point in life have struggled with the mental status of uh, FOMO, fear of missing out. This is something that happens to individuals when they realize that there might be an opportunity somewhere else. There might be an experience somewhere else, something else for them to do, someone else for them to meet, somewhere else for them to be. And it's just a matter of trying to get and obtain that which they do not have and trying to be present in other places that they are not because they are fearful of missing out on something. And of course, in a world of social media, that doesn't help too much because you can see everything and you can see everyone and you can visually try to grab a hold of everything somewhere else that there is to be experienced. And it makes it very hard for people that want to be a part of something and are always worried about missing out on something. Because now with social media, we can see everything and we can see everyone everywhere. So obviously there's something that we must be missing out on. So in an attempt to avoid this, this fear of missing out, people oftentimes attempt to be a part of everything and anything and go everywhere and meet everyone and do everything if the opportunity presents itself because people don't want to miss out. And so they literally drain themselves emotionally, mentally, physically, financially in an attempt to be a part of everything, everywhere, all the time. Anything that's available, they want to be a part of it. And this has always been the case. People have always just wanted Anytime something feels like it's being withheld or being kept away or being removed, you just, you want it. A kid is told not to do it. What do they want to do? They want to do the thing. Don't push the button. Everyone wants to push the button. It's just, it's, it's what we, so anytime we feel like we're missing out on something, we've got to be there. This has been a problem since literally the beginning. Reading in Genesis with creation, Adam and Eve, they were put in the Garden of Eden to tend it and to keep it. And that was their job, their duty. And they were given one job. Literally, you had one job. You had one job. Do not eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That was it. Don't do this thing. Enjoy life. Tend to the garden. Take care of the garden. Keep it. Protect it. And y'all just love life. But just don't eat of this one tree. And what did they do? Why? Well, if you read the story, Eve and Adam are over by the tree and Adam is there. And Eve is getting talked to by this serpent. And He's like, hey, sup, girl? What's going on with you? How's 
his life. It's like, no, obviously, I mean, maybe he talked to the hiss. I don't know. That's what we tend to think. Um, but he, he's, and he's, and he's talking to her and he's, he's, he's like, Hey, so you're missing out on all of this. And this is what you could have, but you don't have it. And Eve's like, you know what? You're right. And I want wisdom. I, I want to be wise. I want to, I want to be like, be like God. And I want to know good and evil. Something is being withheld from me. Absolutely. The knowledge of good and evil is being held from me, which to be honest is a blessing, but it didn't matter to the benefits. All she could see was that something was being withheld. Something was being in, in, and she ends up getting deceived into believing that God was withholding something from her that would have made her life better. And so she's like, I want it. And Adam, of course, being the great bold man that he is, goes up to the serpent, slaps and says, don't talk to my woman that way. Back off. No, he stands there and lets this serpent sweet talk his woman. And she eats of the fruit. And then Adam's like, well, she ate it and she's all right. So let me just do it as well. And they disobeyed God. He disobeyed God. Eve was deceived. And everything was changed from that very point. Why? All because something, they felt something was being withheld. Some, they were missing out on something. They wanted to be a part of something else. And I want to ask you this question. Can you, the question that God asked me that night I or that morning when I was going back and forth with, wow, I really missed out. And he was like, no, you didn't. And he said, so can you, how can you miss out on something that I never intended for you to be a part of? I want to ask you that question. How many times in life do we go through life, through opportunities, through experiences where we are, we're so busy trying to get something that God had never intended for us to have or to be a part of? Are you truly missing out? Can you really miss out on something that was never a, a, a divine appointment for you to experience? Think about it. We go through life with so many different things, so many different wants and and desires and hopes and aspirations and dreams and goals and visions and blah, 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 blahs. In an attempt to get a hold of something, maybe be something, become something, be someone. And yes, there are things that God has given you, dreams, perhaps goals, promises, and you are in pursuit of those things. I'm not talking about those things. I'm talking about the things that just come about in life, the opportunities. This person is dropping a music album. Look how that's going for them. This person's over in Africa praying for thousands of people. Look where that's going. This person's over here preaching. This person's over here doing. This person's over here traveling. And all these other people are doing all these things and something, some of them we want, some of them we desire, some of them we have hopes for. And we begin to, to neglect where we're at and reject where we're at when God's like, no, that's exactly where I've got you, where you need to be. And, and the intention that I have for you is set. Just stay where you're at. It's okay. Don't get caught up in what you're missing out on over here because that's not, you're not missing out on it. That's the whole, that's the whole point of this is we're not actually missing out. You can only miss out on something if it's meant for you to have, if it's an appointment that you were supposed to have. Let me ask you this. Let's say we're, I, I go to tomorrow morning, I go to my doctor's where I go for my normal checkups or health, whatever you want to call it. And I show up at 6 a.m. and I go to the, 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 the waiting area and I sit down and I don't leave for breakfast, don't leave for lunch. It's 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 3 o'clock, been there all morning, now all their afternoon. It's now 4, 5, 6, whatever time they close, I don't know. And they're closing up and everyone's gone. And so, some of the work there comes up to me and says, um, sir, can, can, did you need something? And I'm like, no. I'm okay. You you don't you don't need anything? No, I just I just wanted to come because I didn't want to miss out on something, you know, I just I, and just in case something opened up, I was I thought I would just be here, you know, just just in case something happened. Did you have an appointment? No. I just I just wanted to be here just in just in case, you know. Just 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 didn't want to miss out on if 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 an opportunity opened if, if an appointment, you know, happened, you know, I just I didn't want to miss out, so I thought I would just sit here and wait. But you never had an appointment. No. Well, sir, I'm sorry to tell you, but you wasted your entire day. What are you talking about? No, I didn't. How did I waste my entire day? You didn't have an appointment. So there was no reason for you to be here because there was no experience, no missed opportunity for you. There was no, let me say this, there was no opportunity for you to miss out on because you did not have an appointment with us today. Therefore, there was no reason for you to be sitting here in the lobby from 6 a.m. till closing because you had no appointment. And I wonder if God's up in heaven sometimes thinking that way, like we're sitting there going through life and he looks at us and he's like, can you stop waiting? You're wasting your time. That That's not, stop pining for that thing. Stop waiting for that thing. Stop hoping for that thing. 
that you don't have an appointment there. I've got you where I want you. I've got you doing what I want you to do. I've got you going in the direction that I, that I have for you to go. But we get so caught up in, 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 in missed opportunities, things that we're not missing out on because we were never meant to be a part of them. And I just wonder how many times we, we get so caught up in being here and doing that and, and missing and we're wasting time, excuse me, dwelling on something else. I remember a story from my pastor. He says it all the time from the pulpit. He talks about a time when he was younger dating a girl. And uh, he, I don't think I'm revealing anything. He's told this from the pulpit multiple times when we stream all of our services. So, uh Love you, Pastor. But he's talking about how he was dating a girl at a young age, and they went on a family vacation. And he spent his entire vacation pining for this girl, wishing he was with this girl. And he looks back with regret on that situation and that those circumstances because he neglected the the time he spent with his with his family because the whole time he was just depressed because he wasn't with her, and it was all for no reason. And I think about that now with how many times are we missing out on the moments we're in the seasons that we're in the processes that we're in the places that God has us because we're so busy trying to get somewhere else and pining for some opportunity somewhere else that in the end, it's not really meant for us. And uh, I have a, a letter here. All of this is inspired by this. I wrote this to myself when I was 16 it says, if you can't read, it says, wonderful chicken scratch handwriting. For 25-year-old Jalen Malk only, nobody else, don't open before 11 9, 19, my 25th birthday. And I've always been, I, I'm an achiever. I'm a goal-oriented person. I like to accomplish things. I like, I make checklists to know I, just for the sake of knowing, okay, I did this. I accomplished that. I got that done. And it's always been the way my brain has worked. And um, even as a kid. So I wrote this letter to myself. And if I remember correctly, I think it's a letter where I talk to myself for a second. And then I believe at some point it mentions maybe a few goals, some life accomplishments. And this letter aside, I still remember and I write down goals all the time. I'm like, oh, it'd be nice to have this accomplished by then. And this, and unfortunately, I put timestamps on stuff. And just being completely transparent, 25, hitting 25 was hard. Because I knew there were specific goals and hopes and aspirations and desires and dreams that I had set for 25. That I wanted to be accomplished by 25. That I had desires of being finished by 25. And I'm now 25 and those things haven't happened. And I was struggling because, and I didn't want to even open this, because I I was struggling with the, well, this is just going to be a depressing note to yourself because you're going to just you see all the disappointments and the things that you didn't accomplish and the things that you didn't get done because now you're 25 and it's time to read it. And the Lord reminded me of that story that I told y'all about in the beginning about the missed opportunity and how there was, there was no missed opportunity because I was where God wanted me. And I'm here to encourage anyone here listening or watching to, to remember that. It's okay to have goals, I guess, if, if you're into that sort of thing and you want to have goals and achievements and, and try to set yourself little places to move forward in life. But the bottom line is this, no matter where the, where the, whether it's a God-ordained goal and it's something that you felt he's put on your heart, maybe not the time frame, because oftentimes our timing and God's timing are completely different things, but there's something he has for you. Maybe it's just something that you just thought would be cool to accomplish by a certain time. I would like to encourage you to not get disappointed when it doesn't happen, if it doesn't happen, if you don't obtain that by a certain point. Because that's what I was experiencing when I knew this was coming and I knew I was hitting 25 and I had stuff that I had not done yet that I had hoped to have accomplished and my life wasn't where I thought it would be. I love my life. I have a great life. But it's definitely not what I was expecting or what I was thinking, I guess I should say. And um, But the bottom line is I didn't miss out on anything. No matter what this letter to myself says, and I'm going to read it on here. Well, I will say this. I'm not going to read the entire thing because I don't know what's on here. Depending on what's on here, I will share what I feel comfortable sharing with. But some stuff I'm probably not going to want to share. Um, but whatever happens in life, whatever goals you, you, you don't reach or you do reach, whatever set things you set for yourself, milestones, and if you don't accomplish them, don't get sad and depressed and beat yourself up and say, see, you know, this is... 
I didn't make it and blah, blah, blah. I missed out. No. If you are living your life according to God and you are doing everything in your power to be who he has called you to be and to do the things that he's called you to do and to go to the places that he's called you to go, then you're not missing out on anything. And I struggled so much with missed opportunity, feeling like, well, I could have been doing that or it'd be cool. I had a friend, if I said his name, everyone here would, not everyone, majority of you would know who I'm talking about. He's doing awesome things with music. And I was like, that'd be so cool to be doing that. That'd be so cool to be be doing that, just to, to, to be living that life. I have another friend that's involved in a lot of awesome missions opportunities overseas, doing great things with miracles, signs and wonders, healings, thousands of people getting the Holy Ghost, crusades. All, that would be amazing to be a part of all that. And I found myself pining for these things, hoping for these things, and I felt convicted because God's saying, you're where I want you, and that's all that matters. You are where I have you. You're doing what I've called you to do. You're developing the things that I've called for you to develop in this time and in this season. And so you need to be content with where you're at and what I have you doing, what I have you involved in. And to let go of the goals and the hopes and the desires that I've put on myself and just grab a hold of what God has in store for you and accept where he has you and, and, and do the things he's called you to do and be the things that he's called you to be. So I'm going to read this. And at first I, I, I didn't want to because, like I said, I was doubtful and worried and concerned because oh, it's going to be so depressing. I'm going to be disappointing my 16-year-old self. But you know what? No, I'm not, because this is the hopes and dreams of a 16-year-old, and now I am myself years later, and I am okay with wherever I'm at in life right now because it's exactly where God wants me, and that's all that matters to me. So, let's read. Hello, future Jalen. This might seem like a dumb idea, but your younger self loves it. I'm writing you a letter with the list attached just to see if stuff really happened and to compare your current life with your younger expectations. And I was wise as a kid. Yep. Bullet point number one. Married or engaged by 25. <laughs> this is also so cool because you see some of the, at 16, I wrote this stuff and I had no idea where I'd be. Have a job with either NSA or your church. That's cool. Having my minister's license. That's cool. Uh, greater involvement in music ministry, preaching, teaching, and leading. <laughs> That's cool. Having a consistent relationship with God. <laughs> Not living in Bowie or at least living in my own place. <laughs> Got that done. Uh, more of oh okay i'm not gonna share that one uh i'm not gonna share that one uh have at least one song on itunes didn't get that done uh <laughs> preached at least once to the mother congregation technically speaking in the way our structure is now i have done that it was on a thursday night <laughs> This is hilarious. I wrote this to myself at 16. Wow. Regular player on Antioch's softball team. Does Antioch even have a softball team anymore? That's hilarious. 16-year-old wrote this stuff. And other than two points, which I just don't feel comfortable sharing, there's things on this that I got done. There's things on this that I didn't. And no matter what's accomplished now and what's not, I have 100% peace and I feel great and I am content and I am happy because it's, this isn't about me. It's not about what I wanted, what I was hoping for. It's about living the life that God had planned for me and living the life that he had intended for me. And while some of these things were very much so God ordained moments and things that he desired for me to do. There are other things where obviously they weren't in his plan right now. For example, the married or engaged by 25. I mean, technically, technically, Lord, there's still time for this to happen because I said by 25, meaning before my 26th birthday. Te technically, spe <laughs> technically speaking. So technically, I still have like 350 days to get married or engaged. Not saying that's going to happen because that's a lot to happen in a very short period of time. But you never know. Um 
But yeah, some of these things I accomplished, some of these things I didn't. And regardless of what was accomplished, regardless of what wasn't accomplished, it's irrelevant because it's not about what I want. It's about what God wants. It's not about my plans. It's about his plans because ultimately he sees the beginning from the end. He knows what has been predestined for me. And predestined doesn't mean I don't have a say in the matter and well, it's just all predestined and predetermined and God's just, I'm just his little puppet. No, God just knows the decisions that I'm going to make and the road that I'm going to take and the paths that I'm going to choose. And he's ordered the, the, the pathway of life for those choices to help me become who he has called me to be, assuming I live my life according to his plan and his purpose and his will, which is every desire that I have. So letting go of the frustrations of the what you haven't done and letting go of the, 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 the problems of things that you haven't faced, just understanding you are where God wants you. You're doing what he's called you to do, and you can't miss out on something that he hasn't planned for you to be a part of. You're not missing out on it. To miss something means you were aiming for it. And if you are, your aim is to live in the will of God and walk his life and walk his path, then you're not missing anything because you weren't aiming for that. You were aiming for God. And God is ultimately in control. God is ultimately doing everything. And he knows what's going on. He knows what we're facing. He knows who he has called for us to be and what he has called for us to do far greater than we could ever know, that we could ever understand, we could ever hope for. But we've got to just understand that it's not about what I want. It's about what God wants. It's not about my control. It's not about my desires. It's not about my will, but it's about his, his will, his plan, his purpose being fulfilled. I have a friend that released a single recently. Many of you know him, Frankie Taylor, awesome man of God, awesome worship leader, very anointed singer. And uh, he recently released a song called In Control. You heard it, a part of it at the beginning, and you're going to hear it again at the end. Um, Because I just wanted to share that song with you. I'm not going to, you're not going to hear the entire song on this episode, but I do want you to hear some of it um, in hopes that one, if it, if it starts to minister to you, you can go look it up. You can find the link to the song in uh, the descriptions and YouTube and um, I'll link it in other places. Um, But yes, it's an amazing song and it's just a timely song and it just, it reminds you of, of things like this, where no matter what you're facing, no matter what life looks like, no matter what things are happening, aren't happening, opportunities that are coming, opportunities that aren't coming, doors that are opening, doors that are shutting, processes that you're in. God is in control. He knows exactly where you are. He knows exactly what you're doing. He knows exactly what his perfect plan and purpose and will is for your life. So it's a matter about giving these things to God, trusting him in his hands, and knowing that he holds your world, he has all control, and in the end, he has your best interest at heart. And if we become the people he's called us to be and do the things that he's called us to do and go the places that he's called us to go, then we don't have to worry about missed opportunities because there won't be any because we're going to be living the life that God has called us to live. Thank you guys for listening. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. Listening and watching and sharing and streaming and whatever other ways there are to watch this. Just I really love and appreciate you all. And I thank you all. And um, yeah, just go live the life that God has called you to live. Be the person he's called you to be and do the things he's called you to do. And don't worry about missing opportunities because you're not going to miss them if you're doing exactly what he's called you to do. Remember, guys, keep it real.